Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back on my new to me 94 Sandbar Super Deluxe. In the first video on the sandbars, we talked about the fact that on the way home with it, I noticed that with the air conditioner running, the AC compressor was short cycling, which normally would indicate a low charge of Freon or refrigerant. And in talking to the importers, who I bought it from. They got it originally and it did not have functional AC. It was not charged. They charged it to make sure the AC system was working correctly. So that would indicate that there's a leak somewhere in the system and the fact that they recharged it did not fix that leak. Uh, so we are gonna go through and try to determine where that leak is today. Should probably be something very simple and cheap. Uh, say an o-ring at the compressor, o-ring between some of the AC lines, or perhaps one of the Schrader valves is leaking. Uh, whatever it is, we should get to the bottom of it. Uh, first of all, we're going to get the AC machine out. Uh, I know a lot of you are like, wait a minute, DIY man, what are you doing for a $6,000 AC machine? We don't all have one of those in our garage. And I'm aware that as I've spoke about in other air conditioning videos, AC work is not very DIY friendly. Uh, and Accordance with state and federal local laws, you can't just release your refrigerant, you have to recover it. So you either gotta go to a shop and have them recover your refrigerant before you start diagnosing and working on your AC system or you have to have the equipment yourself. Uh, from there, you have to have bare minimum a vacuum pump, a set of uh, manifold gauges, and uh, you know some kind of refrigerant to refill the system. So it is not a very DIY friendly uh, thing to work on. It is not something, if you do not understand refrigerant and AC systems, it can be very dangerous. Uh, you know, if this refrigerant contacts the skin, you can get frostbite, you can go blind if it sprays you in the eyes. Uh, so always want to be wearing gloves, uh, some kind of eye protection, either safety glasses or a full face shield. Uh, this is something not to take lightly. You can really get hurt working on air conditioning systems if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, you can get careless and uh, hurt yourself either way. So again, we're gonna start off with the Snap-on AC machine, gonna hook it up and recover. Uh, see how much refrigerant recover. Look at the information sticker. Every car has an information sticker for the air conditioning system. Tells you the proper charge, tells you what kind of refrigerant oil to use and some other information. So we're going to compare how much we pull out compared to how much it's supposed to be in it to see if we've lost some. Uh, we also don't know if it was originally charged completely anyway. Likely they just shot a can of refrigerant in it to charge it up. So there's likely air in the system. We're going to vacuum it. We're going to do a leak test and just go through the whole procedure. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, to start off, we got to get the engine cover removed so we can access the compressor and the high and low side connections for the AC. All right, so here's our AC compressor. Here's our low side and high side Schrader valve service ports. We'll go ahead and remove our caps. Always listen very carefully when you remove these caps. You might hear a little bit of spritz, a little puff of pressure behind it. That would indicate or can indicate a leaking Schrader valve, which can be a point of uh, refrigerant leakage in the system. I did hear a little bit of a spritz, a little bit of pressure relief when I pulled off the low side, so we might have a leaking low side trader valve. No noise from the high side valve when I, replay, when I remove the cap. Uh, normally, when I don't know the condition of a system, I will do a full recovery, and once I do the full recovery, I'll go ahead and just replace these trader valves. They're very cheap. Might as well go ahead and put new ones in it so you're not chasing your tail because when you do leak tests on the system, you can check every bit of the system except for these caps because that's where your uh, service port hooks up and you can't check for a leak right here. So our AC uh, sticker is right here. Uh, luckily, this is an R134A system. I was kind of worried that it might possibly be R12. I wasn't sure when R12 was phased out in Japan versus the United States. Uh, but this is a 134 system, so we're good to go on that. We don't have to find any kind of special refrigerant, nor do we have to do a conversion. So as it says here on our information sticker, our charge should be 0 0.45 to 0 0.55 kilograms. Luckily, my Snapple machine will 
convert pounds to ounces to kilograms and every other measurement with the touch of a button so I don't have to do any conversions. So now that we got that done, we'll go ahead and hook up our high and low and uh, start the evacuation, the recovery of the refrigerant that's in the system. So whether it be an AC recovery machine or a set of manifold gauges, you always wanna make sure that your knobs are turned all the way out and in the closed position before hooking these up. If they're all the way down and open, you could have some refrigerant spray out as you try to get the coupler on. Make sure both couplers are on there tight. Make sure they click down in place, not gonna blow off. Uh, now what you wanna do is turn these knobs in and you don't wanna crank them all the way in. I've seen people do that and that's the way you can damage the Schrader valve or bend the Schrader valve and cause a leak and a lot more headache. Uh, you don't have to crank them all the way down to get them to work. What you have to do or what you should do is turn them and watch your gauges on your manifold set or on the AC machine. And just when refrigerant starts flowing, that's when you should stop. You don't have to crank them all the way in till they bottom out. So our gauge moved there, that one's open. And our gauge moved there, that one's open. Give them about a quarter turn past open. Uh, and uh, go ahead and start the recovery process. Just looking at our static pressure, I believe this system is gonna be undercharged. So we'll go ahead and let the machine do its thing. <laughs> All right, so the recovery process has finished, as you see, possibly see on the screen. Uh, draining oil after the recovery is done or anytime a recovery is performed, a little bit of refrigerant oil is pulled out with the machine. This machine will dump it into a measured cup for me to check. And once I see how much has been pulled out, I know how much to add back in before recharging. As we see here, we recovered uh, 0.45 pounds. I'll have to do the conversion, but I'm pretty sure that is not point four five to point five five kilograms that is not a direct conversion so let's ask google real quick 0 0.55 kilograms is 1.213 pounds so yes we are very low our charge should be 1.2 pounds or between a pound and 1.2 pounds and we only have less than half a pound so we are low i was hearing that compressor short cycle as i thought all right so we'll go ahead and back these off remove them went ahead and grabbed my tray here of ac components these are all schrader valves i got my schrader valve removal tool uh, being a subaru they should be just standard we'll see though so we'll remove the high side looks like we might have some uv dye in here already i'm not sure and we did seem to pull quite a bit of uh, refrigerant oil or at least there's quite a bit there at the Schrader valve on the high side. So basically all our little Schrader valve tool is here. And it's the same as you'd see for the valve core, a Schrader valve in your tire. And basically it's just a slot that goes over and screws it in and screws it out. Two size, a uh, small one, which is low, usually the low side and a larger one that's normally the high side, but sometimes uh, low side can use both of the large sized Schrader valves. Well, these are going to be stuck in here because the system is still vacuum pressurized. We'll go ahead and just unscrew them and then we'll slightly pull up on them to break the vacuum and then try to replace them as soon as possible. We don't want any air getting in the system, any moisture in the system that will get in the uh, receiver dryer because we don't want that to get filled with moisture. All right, so there's our low side. And our high side, looks like they're identical. Looks like they're the standard that Honda and a bunch of other Japanese vehicles use. I believe these are the same ones that Subaru use on their regular passenger car. Carza. So we'll put a little bit of refrigerant oil 
on the o-ring to lubricate it before we drop this right back down in here and just screw it down finger tight you don't have to crank on these things they are uh, going into aluminum most of them are aluminum some of them are steel so be mindful of that doesn't take a ton of pressure they seal by the o-ring not by the threads and we'll grab another new Schrader valve again lubricate the o-ring with some refrigerant oil and drop the low side in and just turn it in finger tight again and good to go so now working quickly go ahead and reattach our high and low and draw the system under a full vacuum again to evacuate any moisture and air that got in while we had those valves out all right so we'll go ahead and run a vacuum for about 10 minutes and the I'm gonna go ahead and make the AC machine do an automatic leak test, uh, which normally only finds larger leaks. Uh, the best way to find a leak is to draw it under a complete vacuum, shut off the gauges if you're using a regular standalone vacuum pump and manifold gauge set, and let it sit for at least 24 hours and come back and see if it's still holding a perfect vacuum or if the vacuum has dissipated. All right, vacuum has completed. Now we're gonna go through a 10 minute leak test and just make sure that those needles stay in vacuum and do not drop back down to zero, which would be over here. Anywhere in this area would be a fail that we have a leak. Or if we go boop over to zero here, failure and a leak. This is why you have to be wary of automated machines. It says our leak test is passed. But if we look at our low side pressure, uh, 10 minutes ago our needle was almost between the three and the zero. Now it is almost to the edge of the black. So there is a slow leak on the low side. Now the easy way to diagnose this would be to recharge the system, put the UV dye in there, then go look for the leak with the black light UV light. Uh, the complicated, aggravating way to do it is to get an R134 AC sniffer and go all around the system and hope it hits but uh, I've never had any luck with those things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and inject a little bit of oil with UV dye in it. This is a manual injection system, so I have to push and hold the injection button while I watch the oil bottle. That ought to be enough. Now we're gonna go ahead and charge. Full charge, 0.55 kilograms. Hit OK, high side charge, and start. Point 0.4 kilograms, we're almost fully charged already. Point 0.52 kilograms, almost there, again point Five, five kilograms is our top of the specification. 0 0.53, 0.54, and 0.55. Now we'll go through the process, starting the car or the truck, running the air conditioner, and evacuating the hoses and disconnecting everything. So we're gonna start equalizing the hoses Disconnect the high side hose, keep the low side hose connected, start the AC to max recirculate. Careful when you disconnect these, sometimes Schrader valves can hang open and you get a burst of refrigerant and oil in your face. Luckily, nothing there. Go ahead and put our cap on and start the truck, let it warm up a little bit and start the AC system because the truck is cold.
All right, AC is on. We can go ahead and start the equalization. All right, disconnect the low side hose now. AC condenser fan is running. Our compressor just cycled off. Let's check our interior temperatures at the vent. So we're getting close to 40 degree Fahrenheit vent temp. Uh, I trust this gauge. I got this gauge out of the shop. It was bent, so I don't know how accurate it is, but it's bigger and it's easier to see on film. Uh, so it's pulling down between 45, 50 degrees. This one's pulling down right at 40 degrees. I would expect it to be a little bit cooler than that as the ambient temperature right now is about 70, uh, low 70s. But uh, we'll let it cycle run a little bit. We got it on recirculate. We got it on fan speed two and uh, max cold basically. So we'll see how low it'll get. Uh, just sitting here idling. Uh, it would probably get colder driving it down the road uh, to get some airflow because, as I said, the condenser is mounted under the bed rather than in the front of the truck in front of the radiator like a normal system. Uh, these have the AC system mounted like, um, like my old Snap-on truck. The condenser was under the truck with dual electric fans rather than in front of the radiator and the diesel engine. So about 40 degrees seems to be what we're going to get. I'm going to try to idle up just a hair. See if we can make it any cooler. Might not be showing on the thermometer, but it definitely feels like it's getting colder on my hand holding this uh, phone. And there we go. We're pulling down below 40 now. And the compressor kicked back off. So yeah, that's nice and freezy cold. So another thing we can look at really quickly, I don't know how well this will come through, is the air conditioned sight glass. We can look at the movement of refrigerant through the AC system. Compressor is off right now. We'll wait till it cycles back on. It cycled back on right there. Refrigerant is moving. And uh, I'm not where I can look at the screen, so I might have to put some captions over the screen later on once I've watched the video and see what's going on here. All right, so we've got some nice cold air conditioning in the cab. Hopefully you can hear me over all this with the truck running. I might go ahead and turn it off. Uh, but we're gonna have to let this run for a while to see if we have any dye come out. Might take a few days. We might not have a resolution to the leak in this video. So, so now we go through with our UV light and look for any leaks around the condenser, any of the lines, etc. All right, so this right here is an AC sniffer for 134. It's got a little fan and a little snout there, and it pulls in particles and alerts you if it senses R134 refrigerant. So I'm here at the front of the truck, the bumper is off. I just got a hit there, but I've been sniffing around because I haven't seen any dye. And uh, I keep getting a hit right here at this low side connector. This is the high side going into the evaporator. Nothing here at that low side. Gives me a pegged out hit every time. So. Again, we're gonna give it some time, see if we see any UV dye come out of there. Likely it's just an O-ring in that connector between the hard lines. All right, so I've gone all around the truck with the UV light looking for any bright yellow fluorescent uh, dye leaking out. I'm not seeing any visible around the compressor, the lines to the condenser, all the way up to in the dash with the evaporator. I did not go that far. Um, we're probably gonna have to drive the truck or wait a week or two and come back and check it again. Uh, the temperatures ended up pulling down below 40 degrees into the high 30s. 
I would still like to see it a little bit colder than that given that it's not very hot outside. But again, we're not driving the truck. If we were driving the truck and the compressor was at higher RPM, we likely would see those temperatures drop as we saw in the cab in the video clip when I gave it a little bit of gas and we saw it go from 45 down below 40. So gonna put the truck back together, drive it a week or so, come back in a part two video and see if we can figure out where this leak is coming from. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.